Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to the course decoding comic studies and reading graphic narratives in 21st century India. Right, so here we are uh, going to talk today on uh, first graphic novelists. Right, so uh, the idea is that uh, so far we have been talking about what are the people who contributed to the comic culture and what is their contribution was so on and so forth. Today, what I have planned for you is to, we are going to look at graphic novels and how are we going to read them, right? It is just nothing but a practice. So, there is nothing to explain, right? Today's lecture has absolutely needs no explanation. I just show you the name of the graphic novels and we will talk about what kind of a novel it is and how are we going to read. So, you just have to listen to me carefully and you just have to look at the slides and everything will be clear and crystal. So, right. So, today this lecture is just sit cozy comfortably and listen to me and read the slides, right. Alright. So, uh, going back to the slides, now you see as the slide itself suggests reading the uh, first uh, graphic novelist, right. So, what I have basically planned is that it is the first part of a two part lecture concerned with reading the first graphic novels and understanding how to read a graphic narrative properly, right. So, see, see the point of reason that why I brought this up for you, right, the particular reason that why, why I ask you to uh, uh, look at this slides and read because there is a lot of confusion among us that how are we going to read a graphic novels, right? So, uh, so far we struggle and try to, un like we don't know, in fact, a lot of uh, students, they approach me and when I ask them what kind of novel they are reading, they say, I have read sir, so and so graphic novels and when I ask them, okay, okay, tell me how did you read? So, they just say the way they read novels, that is the same way they read graphic novels and that is why after encount encountering with my students, I experienced that no, there is something wrong with the method and that is a particular reason I have designed this course so that for now who are listening to this course, they will not commit the same mistake, alright. So, what I have done, I have picked up one of the wonderful uh, person Will Eisner's, right and Will Eisner's a very wonderful book called A Contract with the God, right. So, uh, what are we going to do that uh, we are going to deal with uh, iconic graphic novel by Will Eisner called A Contract with God that came out in 1978, right? And uh, Art Spiegelman's classic Holocaust narrative Moss. But before that, let me tell you something about the graphic novel first, right? Before I jump directly to the uh, book uh, Bill Asner's A Contract with God. So, the term graphic novel is somewhat controversial, right? As some argue that it is simply a marketing term used to sell comic book to wider audience. Other argue that the term is useful in distinguishing longer form, more sophisticated comic book narratives from traditional superhero comics. Regardless of one's opinion on the term, it has become widely used in the industry and is now commonly used to describe longer form comic book narrative, right. So, see, uh, I mean before I explain you more, just two things uh, uh, I want to wash your assumption. The one that most of the time what people see that it is a graphic narrative, uh, it is actually a comic book, but people call it a graphic novel because 
if they say it's a comic so people will think uh, that this is not supposed to be taken seriously people will not read it and that is why they have changed the name it is no more comic it is now graphic novel so now people will accept it because it has something to do with the novel it is not something to do with the comic but that's not true second reason is popular people personally realize that comic book is very uh, small one let's say 60 70 pages 80 pages but suppose if you are reading a lengthy version of it so then say it's a long narrative and that is why people is people are calling it a graphic narrative right so keep these two assumptions in the mind and when we are reading it keep reflecting on it and see that how far your assumption or your assumptions are true or wrong all right so going back to the slide please now you see that uh, this uh, 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 i mean regardless of one's opinion it has become widely used in the industry we shall get to know more about the graphic novel and it's a coinage in a later lecture in the series however it is established that the term gained the popularity in the 1980s with the publication of a work such as Art Spiegelman's Mosh right? and Ellen Moore's Watchman and Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns. I am sure that uh, I have already uh, spoken about the Watchman like I just uh, uh, gave you uh, one reference of the Watchmen when I was explaining something and also I showed you some pics of Dark Knight Returns and I am sure that you all are uh, familiar uh, with the Dark Knight Returns but it is also my suggestions to you that if you get time please read uh, uh, Art Spiegelman's Mouse as well right but, I mean read this one too if you have not read but suggest I am suggesting that add this one in your list as well right. So, uh, in recent years, graphic novels have gained increasing recognition as a legitimate form of literature, with many books being included in a school curriculum and winning prestigious literary awards. The popularity of graphic novels has also led to the creation of graphic novel section in bookstore and libraries further cementing their place in the literary world, right. So, the point what I am making is that that graphic novel is now coming into the existence people are reading it and slowly and gradually it is uh, making its mark it's it is making its mark in the literary world so so far i myself knows lot of uh, universities where people are doing research on graphic novels people are reading graphic novels and there are scholar in fact i tell you uh, when i was in uh, germany uh, for my dot fellowship post dam university 2012 yes at it is the first time when my professor asked me to read some graphic novels and i remember still that i read graphic novels that was more on piracy and modernity but we uh, read some uh, indian uh, graphic novels and explored and wrote a paper on it right so the point what i'm making is that it is a 2012 almost i'm talking about 12 years almost 11 years before when I seriously engaged with the graphic novels uh, but at the same time I see later on in the different places I have uh, met uh, very different uh, people who have encountered in fact one of my research scholar Dipturu he has extensively worked on uh, uh, on uh, a graphic uh, novels right like he has ex explored Amrita Patil's work called Kari. So as I say that it's not new phenomena anymore and that is a particular purpose that we are here because it is gaining its popularity people are getting attracted towards it and they are taking it seriously and it is making it a print it is making it a mark in literary world all right so it goes without saying that graphic novel is not taken seriously anymore it is has become very much part of academic debate and discussion all right so moving back to the slides here now we have now Bill Eisner who was an American uh, comic book creator and artist who played I mean we all know him and we have been talking about him who played a significant role in the development of the graphic novel although we have already discussed about the role of Eisner in understanding the comics medium 
for the purpose of uh, this lecture let us reintroduce him in a new light right so so far we read will asner how he contributed to uh, comic medium or expand the idea of a comic medium but today we are going to look at him for a very different purpose right so it is very important to know little bit more about his life before we get into uh, uh, his book a contract with god right so as you see asner was born in 1917 in brooklyn new york and began his career in the comic book industries in 1930s in the 1940s he created the character of the spirit a mask detective who appeared in a weekly comic book uh, insert that was distributed in newspaper across the country in the 1970 eisner began experimenting with longer form narratives which led to the publication of a contract with god widely uh, considered to be the first graphic novel right so generally people see a contract with a god by will asner as a first graphic novel asner work was characterized by a focus on character development and storytelling as well as a willingness to experiment with a different style and technique in addition to his work as a creator asner was also an advocate for the comic book medium and worked to promote his artistic and literary merits asner passed away in 2005 at the age of 87 but his legacy lives on in the many creators who have been inspired by his work and in the continued popularity of the graphic novel as a form of literature and art overall will asner was a pioneering figure in the comic book industries who helped to elevate the medium from a form of entertainment for children to a legitimate form of literature and art so to mark the uh, 100th birthday of will asner in 2017 norton published the centennial uh, edition of his milestone book a contract with god and other tenement stories the book originally published in 1978 and is widely considered to be the first graphic novel and should be included in any comic book collection eisner was one of the comic book pioneers working in the medium before the boom that occurred with the introduction of a superman in the 1940s he revolutionized visual storytelling with his own take on the superhero genre the spirit using film technique in his sequential art narrative even when he worked outside the business as an illustrator for instance for the us army he never retired from comics and always believed in the potential of the medium he was over 60 when he published a contract with a god the book is not written for kids seeking the next superhero battle instead it is a long form comic for more mature readers a contract with a god is a masterpiece that even nearly 40 years after its first publication has not lost its power as we learn from an introduction written by eisner shortly before his death in 2005 the story was the most personal since he mourned in it the death of his own daughter a fact that was for many years and known in the comics community with this book the pioneer of comics became the father of the graphic novel and paved the way for later works like art spilgman's mouse decade hence we know more about how what we call the graphic novel came to be what a contract with god had to do with it and how his seminal work was not always viewed with such a steam the real story is that will eisner likely known at the time if at all as the creator of the spirit a strip that had barely been seen since the 1950s wrote the drew this long comic book called a contract with a god and the other tenement 
stories and the big book publisher in 1978 were not at all interested in such a thing. A small publisher of mostly children books named Barnote gave it a sort, but the few stores that stocked it did not know what to do with it. In the 1998 interview with R.C. Harvey, Eisner recalled his excitement when Brentano's New York City and upscale bookstore decided to order a few copies. And he told Harvey the story about his graphic novel debut and the story goes like this. So see, I mean, uh, as I said in the beginning itself that there is no such a thing uh, in this lecture which I had, which I have to explain to you because it's a very clear and simple. But the interesting part is that you see that what is happening with the Will Asner's book and that is what is a very interesting story so I thought of bringing before you. Alright, so just listen to me and read the slides, this uh, contract with a God, the, how to read a graphic novel with the help of contact with a God will be uh, very clear. Alright, so see what happens uh, when he goes to the store manager. Right? So look at the slide, now you see that Eisner held off from visiting Brentano's for about a week but could not resist seeing his book on the shelves. When he approached the store manager, Eisner introduced himself as the author of a contract with a god and asked, where is it? Now you see the story and then you will laugh at it. He learned that the story, the store had it out front where it sold very well, but then a James Michener book came out. So, Eisner book was served with a religious book because it had God in the title, but it did not belong there. So, it ended up in the humor section, but then a reader complained that it is not funny. So, it was taken off those cells and then Eisner asked, where do you have it now? In a card bo cardboard box in the cellar, said the manager. I don't know where to put the damn thing. So, revisionist history may credit Eisner as a pioneer in the graphic novel field and Eisner's shadow still looms so large over the entire medium of a comic books that it seems impossible that his work in 1978 would not have been a gauntlet thrown down to the industry. But it was Eisner's a contract with a god that broke through the bookstore barrier, it was just a weird, largely ignored picture book when it was released on that might have been appreciated by a certain portion of the readership like the comic book aficionados who had been catching up with the black and white spirit reprints and were curious to see what Asner was up to the age of 61. Now, uh, we are going to see it, a contract if a contract with God, look at the a picture that I have shown and you see interestingly what is written, no, not me, you cannot this, we have a contract, right? And I just showed you the pic so that uh, it interests you. So, a contra if a contract with a God was hailed as a masterpiece and it was that recognition came years later when a few astute critiques juxtapose Eisner's humane graphic novel that was really a collection of stories with the grotesque and ridiculous comics that were available on spinner racks. Compared to Iraq, Son of a Thunder, Dazzler, right, a book like a contract with God must have seemed like a slice of a sublime genius. It was about life and death and pain and suffering and love and sex, hope and despair. There were no Viking Native American barbarians or glittery roller skates to be found. A contract with a god had to be a work of high literary and artistic merit because the other stuff that kind of looked like it certainly was not. 
the conventional wisdom in comic book circles and maybe the fringes of the literary world or let's say art world is that Eisner's real pioneering work was on the spirit in the years right after he returned from World War II. That is where Eisner made strides in comic book storytelling that have influenced nearly every generation of creator. His work on the graphic novel later in his life is impressive not because of their content but because they exist at all. He was ahead of his time with his intentions award a contract with a god in his decision to devote the last few decades of his life to writing and drawing comics that might interest adults shows his keen awareness of the direction the medium would take. And while he might not have broken into the book market the same way later book like Moss and the Watchman would, he was certainly a shepherd of this new soon to be stampede and he remained a wonderful ambassador for the possibility of a comics. So a contract with a god reads differently now than it did when Norton first released this their version in 2006 and only a year after Eisner passed away. The year after Eisner's death was filled with tribute to the old master, it was difficult to read anything in and around comics that was not a variation of here is what will Eisner meant to be. In that light, a contract with a god did not stand much of a chance of a fair reappraisal when held up as one of the first graphic novels ever by a guy known to be the ma grand master of a comics, a contract with a god is a bit of an embarrassment. It is a full of hand wringing and outrageous exaggeration. It is a clumsy and overly expressive pantomime of a life with bombastic narration and too serious self indulgence. The New York labeled Eisner works of Cornball Historinics. The Cornball and the Historinics are visible. If you come at Eisner's work from the perspective of someone looking for realism and subtle emotional truth, but Eisner is not playing on the battleground. His approach to comics is one of a pure expression first realism later, right? So, as I said that what I am trying to explain to you that how are we going to read Bill Eisner's work A Contract with a God. I have just chosen a sample for you to explain that how to read a graphic novel, right? Let us say for example, when we go to the classroom, all right, what happens to us? We are taught novels, we are taught dramas, but it is not that if we become a teacher and then after a point of time we say that, oh no, I have read just Arms and the Man or the Merchant of Venice or let us say Macbeth or look back in anger, right? So I can only teach that drama, I cannot teach other kind of a drama. Or let us say for example, when you have read the poetry by Wordsworth, Sealy and Keats, and if I ask you to teach us the poetry of a Baron and Blake and then you say, no, 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 I did not read that, so I cannot teach you. It, 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 it does not go like this. It simply means that I am just giving you a particular sample that how to read a novel. I am not teaching you, let us say, the mayor of a Castabris. I am teaching you how to read a novel with the help of a mayor of a Castabris, right? So that whenever you read Oliver Twist, by Dickens, you can explain to us without any hesitancy, right? The reason is that you have got to know the method. So, in the same way, when you are reading Will Eisner, right? Will Eisner's book a contract with a god is a possibility that you say that it is a form of realism, but actually you see that, okay, I agree to a certain extent that it has something to do with the realism, but at the same time, it has also to do with the expressionism, which means that it is more about the expression. It is not more concerned about talking what is happening outside the world, but rather what a character goes through, what a character experiences. That expression we get to know when we read Will Ashner's A Contract with a God. All right. So the point is that I am. I will obviously. I am just letting you know how to read a novel. I am not here to tell you the story and show you the pictures and see that. I am just telling you 
that if you read this kind of a graphic novel or other kind of a graphic novel, how you are going to deal with it, all right. So seeing, like get back to the slide please. Now you see that uh, a contract with a god mixes melodrama with uh, uh, social realism, right. Following an author's introduction, a tenement in the Br Bronx, a tenement in the Bronx. The book contains four stories set in a tenement building. They drive in part from Eisner's personal memories growing up in a tenement in the Bronx, an intimate portrait of an immigrant life in the 1930s Bronx. It is an homage to the homage to a vanished world, not a glorified past, however, but a past with all its faults and ugliness. The tragic man characters are fell all destined to fail and each story presents a surprising twist at the end with a contract with a god he aimed to explore an area of a Jewish American history that he felt was under documented. While showing that comics was capable of a mature literary expression at a time when it received little such regard as an artistic medium. In the preface, he stated his aim to keep the exaggeration in his cartooning within realistic limits. The first story, now as I said, right, I am sure that, uh, uh, see, you, you must have read uh, Gulliver Travels by uh, Jonathan Swift and that book is also divided in the four parts, right. In the same way, Bill Asner is, has also divided his book in the four stories, right. So here what are we going to do, we are going to now look at each story, alright. So now focus on the first story, so here on your slides that you see, the first story, a contract with a god drew from Eisner's feeling over death at 16 of his daughter Alice, right, right. Eisner's feelings over the death at 16 of his daughter Alice, which means his daughter Alice has died at the age of 16. In his introduction to the 2006 edition of the book, Eisner first wrote about it and the feeling he felt toward God that were reflected in the story, right. The second and third story respectively, the street singer and the super are fiction but sprang from Eisner's memories of a people he had met in the tenements of his youth. Cochrane is the most autobiographical of the four. The main character Willie even carries Eisner's own boyhood nickname. Eisner once remarked that it took a lot of determination, a kind of a courage to write that story. The story's sexual content is prominent, though not in the gratu gratuitous manner of underground comics celebration of a hedonism, which contrasted with the conservative lifestyle of Eisner, the middle-aged businessman. Eisner used no profanity in the book and according to critics Joss Lambert, the sex in contract is not so much erotic as disturbing the character frustrated or filled with guilt, right. So see, uh, most of the time what we commit a mistake when we are reading uh, this kind of a book, we think that is a kind of a pornography, but actually you see that is not the case. Will Asner himself accepts, or say confesses that it was almost very difficult for him to write this book. Right, as you see, it has something to do. Obviously, you can say it's a fictional, but absolutely not completely fictional, because it's talking something that he has gone through. Right. So the point what I'm making is that when you read this kind of a book, don't be over judgmental. Right. That's it. So going back to the slide again, you see that the most memorable of the, these stories in the first one, a contact with a god is the tale of a Freme Hurst, a righteous man who is doing one good 
uh, deed after another and is told that God will reward you, right? So this is the tale of a Freeme Harsh, a righteous man who is doing one good deed after another and is told that God will reward you. But what happens? He witnesses one catastrophe after another. It's Eisner's modern casting of the biblical figure of a job. Is a job is nothing but a biblical figure. So Eisner's modern casting of the biblical figure of a job moves from his stettle in Eastern Europe to New York in the hope for a better life, but suffering continues to continues to be the leitmotif of his life. Right? You see that nothing is happening good with him. So Job in the Bible is protagonist, like if I ask you to uh, understand uh, the myth connection. So Job in the Bible is the protagonist of the book of a Job and is a good and prosperous family man who is suddenly beset with horrendous disaster that take away all the he holds dear. So, a scenario intended to test Job's faith in God, right? So, I am sure that you know that uh, like uh, uh, the Job character, like he was a very nice, wonderful and prosperous person. But because of certain uh, bad uh, occurrence, uh, like he was, like everything was taken away from him. And this was nothing but a kind of a test that whether he is loyal to the God or not, right? So here you see that uh, I'm sure that if you see if you read modern novels, uh, I'm sure uh, in the last uh, like last to last lecture I was talking about Acherus, Daedalus, right? So these are the character deliberately recalled so that it can give an impression of that character in the image of audience or the reader, right? So Bill Asner is deliberately using this mythical figure called Job, alright? So let's see how the story unfolds, right? So look at the slide now. So this book of a Job by uh, William Blake, right? So here it is a scenario where it is tested intended to test Job's faith in God, is struggling mightily to understand the situation, Job reflects on his despair, but consistently remains devout, right? So he is going through the problems, but he, he does not leave God. Now, here comes uh, uh, a stettle is a Yiddish term for a small towns, right? For a small town with predominantly Askenji Jewish population, which existed in Eastern Europe before the Holocaust, right? So this is a term I'm just explaining okay, that uh, before uh, the Holocaust, uh, this term was very popular for the particular town where uh, Jewish population. Let me write it for you, right? So where Jewish population existed. Basically, it's a call for Eastern Europe. All right. So, yeah. So, uh, what we see here, uh, uh, I mean, I just uh, showed you the pic also. Uh, it is about the 1914, right? So, when Freeme finds an abandoned baby left on his doorstep, like uh, how the story goes. So, when Freeme finds an abandoned baby left on his doorstep. He raises her as his own daughter and finally his life seems to have a purpose. But then all of a sudden she dies and Freeme loses his faith, right? You see how painful it is. After sitting which is like Shiva which is a seven day mourning period that Jews follow at the death of someone in the family, like we all have, like everyone in uh, every uh, religion, there is a, a period for mourning. So in Jewish, it is a for seven days, and he saves off his beard, abandons Judaism, and start a career as a greed-driven, greed-driven real estate investor. But despite his financial success, Prime 
never finds happiness. I am sure that you can relate this, relate this story of, uh, uh, of, uh, of a Freemahar's with uh, the mayor of a Castorbris where the hencher even he does lot of a good things but his suffering never ends right one by one one by one I mean I could relate that even uh, at one point of time he tries to find uh, happiness with his daughter but second moment he sees that that moment of happiness is also vanished right he also become a prosperous like from a hearse but they both never finds the happy like they both never feel good and happy all right so let's uh, 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 go ahead with the story right so what is happening after that Eisner writes in comics and sequential art now uh, we have to understand what he uh, 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 write like wh what he talks about in theory comics and sequential art that drawing right now keep this story in your mind and now we are talking about the method and technique that Eisner has already talked in comics and sequential art which I have already explained to you in details. So comics and sequential art in this book drawing what he Eisner says drawing is akin to calligraphy right drawing is akin to calligraphy in its a symbolic gesture and Imagistic sweep when he says that this is the art of a graphic storytelling. So the condition, sorry, the codification becomes in the hands of the artist an alphabet with which to make an encompassing statement that waves an entire tapestry of emotional interaction. To Eisner, drawing is not a kind of handwriting but a kind of a like so drawing is not should be equated with handwriting yeah. so drawing is not a handwriting but a kind of a manufactured iconography right manufactured iconography through image making like hieroglyphics that is a concept expressed visually in primal form that iconic symbolic mode is the mode Eisner uses throughout a contract with a god whether it is in the opening story in which Freeme has curses the heavens for the death of his daughter or the final story in which a summer vacation in Catskills results in extreme sexual misconduct. Now what is uh, Eisner doing in this comics? Eisner does not express sadness in his comics. He expresses sadness, you see, understand this, with capital letter, right. He does not so simply express sadness. He is like, it's, it's, I mean, with a capital letter, like you have to feel it completely about it, taking to the extreme the idea of a sadness, expression of a sadness. Right, as a tall as the sky and plenty of exclamation points for everyone in the world. So, to hear, he does not express lust, he expresses lust, right, you see. And well, you get the idea because Ashner won't stop ailing it in your face, right, but it is a powerful antidote to the kind of affectless melancholy that permeates the more critically acclaimed dare I say literary comics of artists like Chris Ware or Dane Klops, right. Now let us look at the contract with a god critically, right. So, so one thing what we understood so far, right, there is a, a very bizarre way of uh, uh, expressing about the sadness or let's say any feeling that we have, what he does, he goes to the extreme and makes you feel what sadness actually is, right. 
He does not simply suggest that, okay, this is a sadness or this is a lust or this is a pleasure. No. One by one, it is a such a way, brings up the very idea of, uh, uh, of uh, let's say, uh, sadness or the very method through which he expresses, you can feel your, in your deep heart that this is what sadness is, right? So, this is a something that he does with the help of sequential art, all right? Let me uh, uh, go back to the slides again for you, all right? So, see that energy alone would not make a contract with a God worth reading if it did not also have something at its heart and it does. This is Eisner channeling his world into expressive form, understand? So far what Eisner has been doing, right? This is not what he focuses upon. Something more he adds into, uh, uh, into his book, A Contract with a God and that makes the book worth reading. It is not about him, but the story comes from his life and they are exceedingly personal, right? The story that he chooses are from his life and they are exceedingly personal and not at all what you might expect. The first story, the one that gives Eisner's first book is the title, it is just not about a man devastated by the loss of his daughter. Now, that is how it begins. It is about a man who rages against the fates by trying to control the physical world around him. He falls prey to his own selfish aim, so the victim becomes the villain of his own story and dies the minute he realizes a moment of hope to make things right again. It is a devilish story that goes far beyond his initial scene. That is the story Eisner admits is based on his own anger and pain after the death of his daughter several years before. Yet he does not make the father sympathetic at all. He pushes us to despise him, even in a story based on his own sorrows as a father, right? So what we realize so far, what is Bill Ashner doing with this book, right? A contact with a God. What happens? When we open a book, we see, Oh, we feel sad about a person that his daughter has died, right? And we feel bad. Is that the story is about? No. Even if we get to know that Bill Asner is uh, talking something that is a, that is a personal, all right? But he does not make it a personal. It is a personal, but does not make it a personal. And then, does it all about the emotions only? No. Even if, even his daughter has died, he tries to control his fate and try to overcome the, overcome his miseries or suffering. It is a kind of a challenge to the condition in which he is, right? He, he want to be, he want to win over the fate that he has got. But again, right, again, he, he, he loses the battle. So now you see, there is a person who, what else can be uh, more uh, uh, pitiable for a person whose father, who, sorry, whose daughter has died. But again he gets up, but again something bad happens. Again he dies, again something bad happens. Now you see, so it's just not about the suffering and the sadness. Here you see the extreme level that you go with the sadness. He does not invite the sympathy of the audience, that is a tension that he reveals, right? He does not invite the attention in a way that you become sympathetic. He is, in fact, for a moment there is a possibility that you hate him, that his daughter has died but he still, he is not much bothered about his trying to win over it. But the way story goes, it makes us feel very differently. So listen to me carefully so that we can actually understand how to read a graphic novel with the help of a contract with a god, Bill Astor. All right. So going back to the slide, what you see is that uh, here you see that Asner admitting his own anger and pain after the death of his daughter, but again 
he is pushing like he pushes us to see that how a story based on his own sorrows as a father is not only limited to this but it speaks more than this so frime horsh a single old man who had mourned the loss of his daughter launched his relentless anger towards god relentless anger towards god as god supposedly violated their contract that frime had comprised as a young child and had abided by his whole life right so see why the contract was broken and now you see the reference of a job right job as a character who is devotee of a god he loves a god like anything and now you see the reason if 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 we are a good person and if we are devotee and if we are doing everything good around us and then if something bad happens to us what it will do it will shatter our small world right ki i did not do anything wrong but wrong is happening to me so job despite being everything like despite being good and devotee of our god everything is taken away from him the same case with happens prem harsh all right he lost his daughter like look at the story and then we'll talk more on it so here you see that i mean the contract is broken because because now there's no point in trusting god so early in the book frime perishes tragically from a heart attack and the perspective is switched to a street singer of the name ronald barry who is in search of money and fame to support his family during the great depression despite his golden voice and vast efforts ronald barry's attempt for fame were in vain and is forced to carry out his same monotonous life of a singing in his in this alleys for a change anyone had to spare the story is then told throughout the life of the super who is in charge of the tenement on dropsy avenue and is hated by everyone who live there as he is a sex maniac and has to collect their money the super later commits suicide as he is publicly embarrassed from his interaction with a 12 years old the story continues by narrating the lives of a numerous families on vacation at the cooklane and their endless struggles and experiences from the great depression and then we come to the second and third story that that is a uh, the the street singer and the super find their inspiration in eisner's childhood and the character who populated the city around him both the stories are cruel and sinister and full of ironic tragedy though the street singer is a picture of alcoholism and domestic violence right this one the street singer the super is the more deviant of the two with explicit overtone of pedophilia look at the theme that he picks up a street singer alcoholism domestic violence super pedophilia the, these are the horrors of the childhood made into eisner's expressive iconic hieroglyphics the final story the kukalin is a part pastoral romance and the part retreat into the wilds where animal instinct reign right animal instinct reign not a uh, human when i am saying human what i mean civilized right because if human become barbaric then it seems animal instinct reign right so this is the idea that you need to keep in your mind all right so so in the final story uh, uh, the pastoral romance side is far from wistful is the as the cast of a character on vacation have violent twist with each side is far but with each other and rape is embroiled with sexual awakening the complexity of the story comes from the layers of emotion 
but it's like an orchestra of screams of a pain and longing. A contract with a God manifest how life is what you make of it as the ch characters are faced with various obstacles during the great depression in which they tremble or thrive. Freemahers is presented with his only daughter's death in violation of a contract that he had with a God. Ronald Barry is inclined to alcoholism and unemployment and the super is tricked by a little girl leading to suicide. The same theme is evident in John Steinbeck's The Grips of Wrath and as it narrates the life of the Jodes family who are unfavored and against all odds in the Great Depression and Dust Bowl on their form in Oklahoma. Matched up against a drought, economic hardship and bank foreclosure forcing thousands out of work and the family struck out in seek of a better life in California. Eisner uses a mellow tone in a contract with a god which supports his character's attitude and personality. Most of the events that happen to them do not set light on their lives, making them quite depressing. Eisner's tone keeps the story focused and realistic, making the reader feel as if they were living life alongside the character. Eisner does an exceptional job of conjuring setting in the story through his vivid imagery that describes places such as uh, uh, the Bronx to the Caxil Mountains in the in the in the uh, in the southern uh, in the southeastern New York. His narration of the story is a formal, but when it comes to the dialogue between character, it is rather technical as it embodies the accent of the native New Yorkers. Eisner uses a large amount of figurative language as many similes and metaphors and that can be found throughout his writing. Rather than literal description, it is intriguing how Eisner depicts experiences of the Great Depression through a Jewish lens. His illustrations are very detailed and project the emotion expressed by character extremely well, giving the reader a deeper understanding as to how the characters felt. This allows for a connection to be established between the reader and the characters, heightening the literary experience. So, see, now uh, let us uh, go back for a minute and try to understand what Bill Asner is doing in his uh, a book called The Contract with a God, right? Because so far what we did, we uh, understood uh, all his uh, four stories that contains its book and like which, uh, which, which is a part of a book like the four stories and we saw the different kind of a theme explode. See, if you look at it, he deals excessively with something that is very disturbing for us, right? Let us say alcoholism, pedophilia, right? Domestic violence, these are the things uh, that are really horrendous. And uh, if we are reading a kind of a story like this, it is going to create a turbulent in us. Our emotional aspect are going to be destabilized, right? But the challenge for Bill Ashner is that how he is going to create the same kind of emotion in the reader, right? The beauty of the Bill Ashner is that he is talking about his personal experience or uh, a kind of experience with which he has met in his everyday life but he maintains distance itself, like he maintains distance from them and he, he successfully deals with those themes. So, let us say a contract with a God. What is a contract with a God is, right? The contract with a God is simple that, okay, I will uh, uh, keep following your obey and order or whatever you want 
your job is to make me happy but we see even with the mythical figure called job uh, that this is this, the same thing does not ensured like the job is not happy even if he because he is uh, being tested by the God right he suppose if I take away all his prosperity after that will he remain loyal to me or will he remain uh, good to me or will he keep loving to me right that is the reason at the same thing here the title is chosen basically from there and then when we are uh, uh, reading Bill Eisner's book here the characters right or also something like this who like form heads who is really good and he follows each and every principle of the God but he remains good but what happens he is fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting but his uh, happiness never ends right he remains dissatisfied he he fights his his fights against his uh, uh, fate but what happens in the result what happens in the result is that he remains unhappy and you see there are characters who are committing suicide the reason is that he's they they don't find happiness in the society however what is shown that at one side it is a kind of a willpower of an character who is standing against all the odds and all the suffering and is striving for uh, happiness but result is other way around he is not getting what he is and this is the same thing that he wanted to convey to the audience or let's say to the reader who is reading so what experience he has gone through he has chosen a comic medium or a book let's say contract with a god through the comic medium and want to address the same idea to the reader but the challenge for him is how he are going to create the same kind of a sympathy or emotions or a, a, a emotional uh, connection with a character and this is why he picks up his technique called sequential art right so he picks one by one in the sequence so in the beginning what happens a daughter has died then okay we feel bad okay we move next thing what happens he 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 is trying to in fact he gets whatever he wants every actor has received but Bill Eisner goes he explores that the person is still not happy he is still looking for the happiness but he is sad so see Eisner is going to yell on your particular expression that he is using the expression that sadness so he is expressing sadness but not the kind of uh, way through which it happens. so again what he does he brings up one situation after another situation after another and he makes us feel that there is something and we are tightly jacked with that okay something is wrong here he is successfully has expressed sadness right he is a so here you see it's a perfect combination of employers and what theme or Either they both are in sync and he is successful at it, right? Uh, I mean, that I explained to you. Uh, I'll just take one more for your convenience so that uh, you can understand it in details properly. But uh, for now, I'll end it here and I will request you that please read a contract with a God by Will Asner by now and for time being read it so that we can meet next time and read another graphic novels all right so see you guys take care have a good day bye bye